<clears throat> February 23rd, Doug Shiloh's Puku, The Angel of Death, Chapter 8. The Angel of Death does not arrive in the form of a dark shrouded figure complete with scythe, but as a movie house usher with a flashlight, he leads you down the aisle. The black limousine dropped you off, walking past the angelic-faced crowd milling near the searchlights and marquee. You said a word into the microphone for the TV announcer and went in. The lobby scent of popcorn with real butter and steamed hot dogs still lingers as you follow the usher down the aisle of the Grand Auditorium. The theater has a vast, glitter-speckled ceiling, a double balcony, box seats, stone-carved serifs and gargoyles on the walls. And off to the right side of the orchestra pit, a woman plays a pipe organ. Ballpark-like vendors work the audience, selling popcorn, tossing bags of peanuts, pouring soda and beer. A cigarette girl strolls by you. Hopefully no one is in your spot. If they are, you'll have to make do. The middle is the place. The usher stops and motions you into a middle row, halfway down to the curtain. You try not to step on anyone's feet. The seat, when finally reached, is cushioned in velvet and it even rocks. You could stay here forever. The lights dim. The room is pitch black. Someone coughs. The air-conditioned theater is on the cool side. Maybe you should have worn a jacket. It's too late now. A stream of light, a mix of dust and smoke and celluloid, flows from the projectionist booth. The academy leader bleeps, counting from ten to two. The first frames flicker on the screen. At first, the images are in black and white, and very grainy. Two shadowy figures walk up a terraced hill in the darkness, away from a 57 Chevy. It is then you realize the audience is made up of ghosts from the past. You sense their feathery weight, and it hits you. You're dead. The frames flicker. You're in the movie of your life, and you can feel and taste and smell and think what was being lived up on the screen. The ghosts behind you are a jury of truth. There you are in a darkened room, existing in a captive way, with the happiness or misery of your life, the joy, the heartache, the struggles, the drama, all of it. Peter's walking up behind me now, so I'll stop.